Uh, you know, there's so many projects uh, out there these days uh, that create fantastic worlds. You know, images take us to other dimensions, other times. Tell us about this one. What, what was it about this project and the vision of it that uh, you found most appealing? Um, well, I've always been into uh, the world of ancient Greece and, and certainly the fantasy aspect thrown into this one as well. Uh, Tarsem was the one true element that got me attracted and passionate about the script. Though. <laughs> Terrific. And Kellen, tell us a little bit about your character. He's the god of wetness and uh, <laughs> moisture. <laughs> I play Poseidon, and I love my character. I'm a fish, I love to swim myself, and he's kind of the fun uncle that Zeus here. He's the salty one, is that he's right? He's the salty one. <laughs> Fantastic. And Luke, Zeus, I mean, that's a tall order to fill. You know, we talked a little bit already about gods being young. Um, how, how do you play Zeus? I mean, is he informed by, does he have an ancient voice, or is he a young man in his voice? Um, no, I, we left the ancient voice to John Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you can't really speak like John. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, it's a, it was a difficult one. It was a challenge. Um, uh, we, we're used to seeing Zeus as a, an older man. He's always been portrayed by older actors. So this was a new, uh, a new slant on, on the role. But like Tarsem said, you know, if you were a god, you'd want to be young and in your prime of your life, you wouldn't want to be old and- Like Mark Canton. Like what? Mark Canton, exactly, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, that, that, was a, that was a challenge, but it was, it, was, it was fun to play and take on the role of a, you know, the king of the gods and all, all the other things that Zeus uh, encompasses. That's great. And Stephen, you know, with a movie with characters of this size and scale, it's easy to get lost, between, you know. Uh, your character is the one that maybe the audience might connect to the most in a way, don't you think? Uh, yeah, Mitch Stavros is a, is a slave, you know. He uh, meets Theseus on a slave train and ultimately de decides he could be on his own with what's happening in the world or he can join forces with, with the group. And uh, it only helps that Frida Pinto's characters in that mix, because I think Stavros is a bit horny as well. <laughs> and, um, and the rest is the rest, you know? That's great. And Frida, what's it like to be in a movie with this size of a canvas? I mean, that, it's a, it presents a different set of challenges, I would imagine, for an actor. Definitely, because this is my first ever, this was my first ever big budget film. And I had just stepped off two really small independent films. Um, sure. So it was going to be a lot more challenging. I think you've got to have a lot of patience when you do a film like this, because especially when you're not on set every day, you have to wait in your trailer, and you've got to be patient enough. And you, want, you need to be able to be dedicated to come on time every day, even though you don't, you're not probably required first thing in the morning. Sure. But it's really a teamwork at the end of the day. And so it's great to work with someone like Tarsem, who gives you that freedom to bring in whatever you would like to bring to your character. Um, so it didn't feel very different in terms of performance. It didn't feel very different from an independent film, but the whole logistics of it is very different. Sure. You know, and, and I mean, you look down this row and you see actors who are in, uh, you know, like, as you mentioned, uh, The Hobbit, and Man of Steel, Twilight, uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Um, Mark, is everybody just like stealing your Blackberry? Or I mean, why, how, are, how are these people getting? Well, again, I, along with the studio, Tucker and Ryan, our brothers, uh, Johnny and I always pride ourselves on what's next, just like Comic-Con does. We're looking for originality. We're looking for cutting edge. We try to stay away from the bullshit of the past and bring something new to everybody. And Tar Sam, of course, having such a great vision of the movie to begin with, the casting uh, was relatively easy and came together beautifully. Okay, who has the best Mickey Rourke story? <laughs> Come on, I know e somebody must. Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the best one you want to say in public? Anyone? Got it. <laughs> I never met him. No, not in public. Not uh, it looks like, I think, a very simple one because Mark... Uh, <laughs> he tells me what to do now. He tells me to speak up. Okay, so uh, it's, very, it's very short. Uh, Mickey would come on set every morning and uh, uh, we would have to make sure that Mickey would be on time and uh, Mark was in charge to do that and Mark would come back right away to me and say, why don't you do that? <laughs> and then uh, I would go and then I would go back to Mark and say, why don't we do it together? <laughs> And then Mickey would come and uh, would say, 
good morning to Mark and call him producer number two. <laughs> and, and Mark would be a little bit uh, upset. And I, and I was very happy. <laughs> so that's, that's, the, that's my little story. St Stephen Dorff was happy too. 